Today we're reviewing the Pole Tyval. What's up everybody? We're here in beautiful Sedona riding the iconic Highline Trail on the Pole Tyval, a very, very modern steel hardtail. Whoever did that, you are awesome, my friend. Thank you. Today I'm riding with my buddy John. We're here on hardtails on Highline. This is my go-to rowdy trail for rowdy bikes. It feels balanced. I'm not fighting it for balance. I'm glad it's not any slacker for the climb, but it's really not bad. Yeah, nice and stretched out. I do not feel cramped in the slightest. Here comes the hardest part of the climb. Next hundred yards. Easy to control this bike. You'd think enduro bikes wouldn't climb big technical stuff very well, but I actually prefer it. Yeah, nice job, Paul. Yeah, baby. That's nice. Doesn't hurt that we have perfect conditions. Yeah, cleaned it all, no dabs. Let's finish her up. Oh yeah. Yes. All right, it passed the no dab highline test. This bike fights me when I try and manual it, which is weird because normally when I have a tall stack, it's easier to pop into a manual, but I think it's the low BB and that long chain stay. I really have to lift that front end super high to hit the balance point. This is a good little climber. It's a roomy bike. It does not feel cramped in the slightest. Reach feels a little bit bigger than its numbers suggest, which is real nice. And I love that it's not this lethargic, heavy enduro bike. It's a decent little trail bike. Granted, it's nothing like that super light Yeti Arc or the Spot Rocker, but it can also handle way burlier trails than both of those bikes. So this bike rides different than its geo number suggests, like almost every bike. The seat angle feels way steeper than it is. I'm in a really nice aggressive climbing position, which is really nice on steep uphills. Thanks so much, you guys. Just two of us. Oh, trail conditions are sublime. Stack is really tall on this. The only bike I've come close to this tall is my Banshee Paradox V3. I love a tall stack. And surprisingly, this bike does not feel super heavy doesn't feel overbuilt. A lot of aggressive hardtail makers know that these bikes are going to be punished. So they completely overbuild them. And then the bikes ride like anvils. They're not compliant. They're not very lively to ride. They just feel stiff. This bike doesn't feel overbuilt. It feels light without feeling noodly. And it feels burly without feeling heavy. I'm glad it's not any slacker. I am putting a little more effort in to stay balanced because of the slack head angle. Totally doable. This feels a little bit bigger and more planted than the Hanzo ESD. ESD had a little more playful party in it. This has a little more racer attitude in it. This is a 435 chain seat that feels like a 440. It's not like the Ragley Big Al where it feels like 420 on the manuals and 440 when it's planted. It feels 440 all the time, even though it's 435. Reminds me a bit of the Solaris Max and Kodak Beefy Max. It feels a little lighter though. It feels significantly lighter than the Hanzo ESD. All right, here's the double switchback. It's tough on a long bike we did that one nice i could not clean this 
on the Marin Elroy. It was way too much bike. <laughs> oh, beautiful. This thing has good slow speed balance. Not bad, Paul. I'm impressed. I'm glad the seat tube is not a millimeter taller or I wouldn't be able to ride a 150 dropper on this. I'd love to see the seat tube three inches shorter so I could run a 175 on here. There's no reason to have it as tall as it is, especially on the small. Oh, this thing's a joy. I'm impressed with how well it climbs. I was expecting kind of a slow slog up this. To me, it's zippier than the raggly bigwig. It's got that muted steel feel. It doesn't accelerate quite like an aluminum or carbon bike, but it's a nice riding position. Nice frame feel. I'm impressed. Did not expect it to do this well on the ups. This thing feels so much more natural than the Marin Elroy. Here we are at the top. Good job, Paul. Real impressed. You got it. Oh man, all time conditions here today. Oh, this bike is a rocket. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, this bike is so fast, so confident. Wow. What does this remind me of? Oh, this is so good. Yeah, what a bike, Paul. This is super fun. Thank you very much. There's just two of us. Thank you, have a good day. Oh, it's so quiet. Such a good ride feel. I'm getting some chain slap. I need a chain stay protector on this thing. Oh. Wow, what a cool bike for charging. The harder you charge, the more it wakes up. Woo! It's not incredibly playful in the sense that it takes a lot to get it on its back wheel. Oh, this is cool. So good. I've already got chips on the chain stay. So I would definitely want a chain safe protector on any hardtail, especially this one. That's the only noise I'm getting though. Holy cow, what a machine. No pun intended. This trail gets overshadowed by the big moves down there, but all the, ups, the up top stuff is so fun. This suits the 140 fork really well. So smooth. Oh, what a bike. This is special. Really nice ride feel. Not quite as compliant as the Kodak Solaris Max. All right, let's hit the bonus drop. I'm feeling confident on this thing. Whew, this one scares me every time. Oh, so composed. Oh, we're having fun. What a perfect day on a fantastic bike. It lacks a little bit in the playful department, but it makes up for it in the stability department. Love how stable this thing is. You can still crank out emergency manuals where you need to lock the front wheel over something, but you're not gonna hold long sustained manuals as easily as something like a Hanzo ESD. So this is a very good bike. It's definitely biased toward the aggressive, fast, enduro, steep, racy feel. I could ride it for my only bike, but it's a little more aggressive than I'd want for my all-time bike. Because most of the time I'm not able to find trails as steep as this where I can really make use of that head angle. But I know there are plenty of you out there who will. 
This is one of the more pedal friendly and trail friendly enduro bikes out there. Doesn't quite have the snappiness of the Kodak Beefy Max frame feel. And it's not quite as supple as the Solaris Max. It's right in between the two. This bike's riding a lot better than I imagined. That paint just kind of glows. It looks like it's got a battery. Here we go. Let's see what condition this trail's in today. That feels real good. Oh yeah. It's in such better shape than it used to be. I don't know, that still needs some work though. It's pretty blown out. This bike has so much control. Coming through here slow. And here we go. Now we follow these white lines. Yeah, smooth as butter. What surprises me most about this bike is how well it does at slow tech moves. Most big bikes like this, oh man. Yay, this is way better. Oh boy, that's way worse. Whew, we made it. Sorry, had to concentrate a little bit there. Uh, most big enduro bikes like this are not great at slow speed. They kind of get stuck. This is a really well-balanced bike though, wow. I have so much confidence on it. Oh, we got a puddle. Most people miss this turn. Yeah, doing this whole trail on 2.3s on the Hunt trail wide wheels. They're one of my control variable wheels that I test how stiff a frame is using these wheels on almost every review. These are the Nuke Proof Horizons or the Hunt Enduro Wides. And it did really well. Wow, what a bike, I'm impressed. Reminds me a lot of the Pasila Hamari, except it's lighter. The Pasila Hamari felt like a, a brute, just a charger where you just point downhill and smash through everything. And this does that well too. This is just a little lighter. The Pasila was more playful, easier to get on that back wheel. Oh, this corner so well. This feels a little bit like a longer wheelbase bike than a lot of the bikes I test in my size. But it doesn't feel ridiculously long like the Marin Elroy. What a special day on a special trail on a special bike. This section represents what I think a lot of my friends in Southern Cal have for your trails. Just fast, rowdy riding. Hello. There's two of us. Thank you. This bike will jump if there's a long manicured booter like you'd find at a bike park, but it doesn't want to like pop off of every route and bump in the trail. It's still... <laughs> Hello. Oh, you're fine. You can just stay there. We'll go around you. Thank you. Oh, such good dirt. So much traction. It just rides like a long wheelbase bike with a long chainstay. Long groomed high speed jumps, no problem. Little poppy jibs, it struggles a little more. And that makes sense given its intention. And pulls all about making long bikes long fronts and long rears and it rides like that and that's just a style choice it makes the bike very fast and very planted okay so here where it's the trail's a little bit flatter huh, i can still bunny hop up that two foot lip but here where it's a little bit flatter the bike is just a little bit 
less zippy and energetic. Ooh, nice hard rim strike there. Yeah, it's just a little bit less zippy and energetic as like an aluminum bike or a carbon bike. But still more comfortable than most steel bikes. Check that out. That's my rim ding just now. I like these Hunt Trail Wide wheels, but I don't love them. I've had more dents on them than any other wheel by far. They just dent easily on that rim edge. But it'll get me home. Then I'll bend it back out with the crescent wrench and go again. But they are a little bit soft. But I like the weight, I like the ride feel, and the hub feels good. I'm really surprised by this bike. It was more composed than I thought at slow speeds. In fact, this bike, at like barely tipping over, just creeping along down technical stuff, it's better than almost any other hardcore hardtail I've ridden. I was really impressed. Had great balance and had a lot of composure on those steep, slow rolls. I'm really impressed. And this thing just wants to open it up. It's a really well-balanced bike. Some of the really, really wild bikes like the RSD RS291 and the Marin Elroy, they're just a little too radical for me to be comfortable letting them rip and letting them open. And this bike was right on the cusp. It felt really good. I could open it up, let it rip, and it was really controlled, really planted to the ground. It's really fun when you get to let her rip and just let off the brakes and tear through flowy, fast stuff, blues and blacks and double blacks. Really fun bike. I wouldn't change the seat angle. Seat angle is perfect. I wouldn't change the head angle. I love the tall head tube, the tall stack. It just feels planted. You never feel like you're about to go over the bars. Descending, I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. It just felt super composed. The rear end felt long and planted and wanted me to stay glued to the ground and that gave me a lot of confidence. But it wasn't so long like the Marin where the back end was losing grip and sliding. Cornering, I'm gonna give this a 10 out of 10. It corners extremely well. It just, you just rail corners. The geometry is perfect for that. One thing they could do to improve it is cut this off. I know everybody likes that little gusset. Cut this off, trim this down. Since it's a totally straight C-tube, I could easily run a 175 in there, and this might be the one bike where I could run a 200. And I would just love to experiment with even more drop. I think it'd make the bike even more playful. But that's just my personal preference. But this is a small, and it rides like most mediums and even larges. The bike feels bigger than its numbers suggest. It felt roomier. The reach felt closer to 460 than 450 but it didn't feel overly huge. It just felt like a enduro race bike. And I think that's the best way to sum this up. It's not a jibby play bike, but it's an enduro race bike that can climb just fine. And then you <laughs> open it up downhill and it, it does really well. Playfulness, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Not super playful, but it's so carvy on the ground. It's got its own version of playfulness. It's just not poppy and jibby. Man, what a special bike. Special sauce, it's got a little bit of special sauce. And there are other bikes with the same numbers, but they don't quite ride like this. And I'm really impressed with what Paul's done with this tie ball. So who's this bike for? I would recommend this bike for people with shuttle trails or lift access where you take the chairlift up and just bomb down. I would recommend this for people who like to race enduro on a hardtail. I would recommend this bike for people who love to go fast and who have trails that can handle it. If it's too blown out or chunky, it still feels like a hardtail. It gets in over its head a little like any hardtail. I wouldn't take this on a full-blown DH track. I wouldn't take any hardtail on there. Sure, you can get down it, but you're not able to just really let it rip when it's super chunky, but that's every hardtail in existence. You could bike pack on this bike just fine. The climbing position and all-day riding position is really comfortable thanks to that steep, effective seat tube. Or at least it felt steep to me. It did not feel as slack as the numbers suggest. This has some of the best cable routing I've ever seen. And it's done right. And it's easy to do. Really clean routing. No sharp bends anywhere. You'd think that's a simple thing. But a lot of companies get it wrong. And Paul did a great job on this. I love the straight C-tube. I love the geometry. I love how light the frame is and how light the build came out. Just a really, really great aggressive hardtail. This bike is not for people who want to do 60 mile days. While you could do it on it, 
you'll benefit from something lighter like that Spot Rocker or the Yeti Arc or the Banshee Paradox V3. Lighter bikes like that uh, are a little bit better on long days, but this could do it no problem. This could totally be someone's only hardtail and only bike if they were on that aggressive pointy end of the spectrum and they really liked hardtails. But this bike is not for people who like to jib and manual and just pop and play everywhere. It just wants to stay planted and go fast. If you need advice on your next hardtail and you're not sure what to get, or if you're wondering how this bike compares to the big wig or the middle child or any other bike, I offer bike consultation on Patreon. That's one of the ways I make money to support this channel. So if you're stuck and you're having a hard time deciding, become a patron today, support this channel. And if you love hardtails as much as I do and you ride hardtails by choice, get yourself some merch and some swag in the links below. You're part of the hardtail party family. Wear that with pride and show people that you're not embarrassed to ride a hardtail. Instead, you're proud to ride it. Thanks for watching. There's a party in the mountains and you're invited. Thank you